Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art With Me Speak. Today I'm going to guide you in a nice, uh, relaxing and mindful Zentangle practice. If you're new to the word Zentangle, Zentangle art is an art that is based on organic abstract designs and patterns made out using one important element, which is lines, different type of lines that will help us to create a variety of patterns and fill the space with a nice, sophisticated uh, and complicated, well, it look complicated, but you will find out that that is not complicated once you know the right steps to take, what to do first and what to do last, and once you practice and develop the right fine model skills that you need for this type of practice. I love them because they are they help me to keep my fine motor skills up in shape, and they also help me to really train my brain to stay focused and present to my own experience right now and be in the moment. You will hear my voice while I guide you. If you want to put some nice, uh, relaxing music in the background, uh, you do you. There are different ways that you can use my tutorials and my video. You can pose after instructions, prep the materials that I will tell and that is also written in the description box and then practice with me. You can pause the video if you need a little extra time or you can just practice along with me. And then at the end, if you want to add some more uh, to your practice, to your project, feel free to do so. If you have a busy schedule and you can only dedicate 10, 15 minutes, maybe you can divide the video in three different practices. So for you, it's going to happen in three sessions, right? The one you set to the design and the outline, the second you finish the color, and the third you will dedicate to complete the final details. Or you can watch my whole video, speeding it up so you know exactly what is going to happen and what are the steps and then you can practice at your own convenience. For today's practice, of course, that we get inspired by nature. If you know me, I love flowers and leaves and stuff like that, and I love to represent them in different ways, more or less abstract. This is an objective abstract, which means that you can still see that we are doing leaves and flowers, but we are not going to represent them exactly the way that they look in reality. If you look something like that, you need to look into realistic drawing exercises or maybe one of my painting practice with watercolors in which I actually sketch and draw before, paint, and then refinish it. So if you're new to this channel, please consider to subscribe, scroll to my, you know, all the, vid the videos that I published so far. And in my short, uh, you will see many of these Zentangle and mindful practices. For today's practices, we need a mix and media paper. If you have your journal, keep using your journal. If you're using loose pieces of paper, please, I always recommend you save them all together because it's a beautiful journey that you're going to look back at it and see your improvement and your artistic personality coming out. So I say pencil, a uh, regular tip marker like a Sharpie or any brand that you have available as long as it is black, a fine black markers, any brand, and then I have a blue a dark green and a turquoise. So these are the three colors that I will use for my practice. So look into your supplies and see what you have. If you don't have a turquoise, if you want to use a light green and a dark green and then a blue, feel free to do so. Remember that I want you to focus on the process more than on the final products. And I want you to maybe practice with multiple times the same type of exercise with different color palettes, with you know some differences and variations. So you can and really find what it fits you the best. So I'm going to turn the camera and we can start this beautiful practice together. Okay, let's open this journal. Let's see actually what we have inside since it's been a while since I went through all the pages. So these are all the patterns that I created. And many of these patterns are featured in my YouTube channel. So you can see exactly the step by step. Some of them are just in the shorts. So I suggest you to go in shorts, but some of them instead it was a guided practice. So the tangle, look at that. You know, that's been a journey guys that we started together. As I told you, I really, really like to keep everything organized in journal because for me it's good to go back. Uh, maybe sometimes you don't have an idea and you want to look at what you created so far. This was, I remember, it's beautiful, but it was a very long, long practice. 
but definitely helped me with focus and concentration. I love this practice because they support my fine motor skills. So they make me better and better in tracing lines and patterns and creating implied, which means fake texture. And uh, look at that optical illusion, play with different color palette. This one was my last video last week that many, many people appreciated. This one was also an optical illusion that I published recently. And here we are. And oh my, I have the last two pages. So let's make this be a nice, beautiful, mindful practice. So what I like to do, and if you have a big page, you can do the same. I like to kind of reframe it. So I make my space a little smaller. Those lines don't have to be perfect. They can be, you know, the way that they are. And then we're going to go over with the black marker. So now we need to fill the space and I will go first up with the diagonal line you will go back down near the first line that you trace. I know that it's a little bright, but hopefully you can see. I don't like to push too much with the pencil. We're gonna do another diagonal and curve the line and then we close it. And I will leave it like this. And we are gonna start to set this pattern of leaves that as I told you, they are not realistic leaves, it's just like, a, made by undulated line up and down and i will do the inside already exactly the way that we did the first two like the branches so i know that i will leave this space white or maybe another color i will decide it so leave space and do it again they don't have to look up the same and you should also change the size. Change a little bit the direction. So you need to fill the space that, that you have available because we want it to be very busy at the end. Now we're gonna do like some overlapping. So you're gonna do same type of leaves behind actually in this one we have i would say that i'm gonna put one here so i can have some overlapping with this one but then i'm gonna overlap a little bit again here and down go slow keep a good posture follow your hand control and focus on the quality of the line don't push too much with the pencil because it's going to be extremely hard for you to move around properly right if you are too much pressure you kind of block the wrist and your hand one more probably i will change the direction to just change things up and now we're going to add some of those leaves on the other side as i say leave some space between them so they will it will help you with the overlapping and change a little bit aside or i stop here because now we're going to add the sum of those and actually we are going to overlap and so with the pencil and with an eraser actually since we are using pencil for this reason this time we are not going to work directly on markers we are going to erase the lines behind the leaves that we are adding now. We can have fun now and overlap this one underneath. And one more. It's like a sort of flames, right? I'm gonna add the details in the center so it will allow me to leave it white and create another point of interest inside the leaves. This one, we want them pretty big. Pretending that you're tracing nice waves. So you go with this undulated type of lines. And again, now we're going to overlap. So actually create the leaves in the background. 
it's nice to leave some nice small gaps uh, between the leaves. We're going to put another one here. So when we when we well, fulfill the background, my goodness, sometimes English, let me tell you. Oh. It's going to be, it's going to create a nice, nice movement over here. We're going to do some more here. One more. And you see, I leave those gaps because then we're going to recolor the background. I want to add the one more here. And then I would do one here that goes behind. And then we start with this one on the bottom. I think I'm going to do one here so we can create some nice overlap in there. One here. We're going to do the pattern in the center. One and two. And then And I think that we have enough. Now, regular Sharpie. First, I'm going to go over slow and steady to the lines that I traced with the pencil at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And now, I'm going to go over on the lines that I tra we trace together with the pencil. So we're going to kind of outline with the black only the outside of the leaves. Mm -hmm. The space, like the gaps between them. Mm -hmm. Now, some people love this noise. I kind of love it. Some people don't like the noise of the marker, like <laughs> on the mixed media paper, but guys, it is what it is, right? For the love of art and for the love of this beautiful design, even if we don't like the noise, we're gonna hang in there. Take your time, you go slow. Remember that if you want to raise the pencil after, you can, just in case you were not able to go precisely over the lines. We embrace the imperfections. We don't want to have perfect artwork. We want to have a beautiful, mindful creation that responds to your own personality. And remember that the focus is always on the process. What are we focusing on here? We are focusing on lines, the quality of lines, undulated and curved lines. We will be focusing on pattern and how pattern can give us the optical illusion of movement. And they can give so much, they can add so much more interest to a piece. We are focusing on the design the use of space that we have available. So there are many elements of art that we are going to review to this mindful practice. And also we learn commitment and patience because, because it's entangled art need us to be patient, careful, and committed. As I say, you can go slower or faster, you can divide the practice in multiple sessions. I suggest you to do so instead of rushing through the practice. We are not checking boxes, right? And can go here. We keep outlining everything so we avoid to get confused when it's time for us to color. It's easy to get to get confused when we do disentangle this type of complicated, which is not complicated, but let's say intricate patterns. So it's uh, with some teeth like the outlines, uh, 
uh, we can definitely help ourselves, right? To see when we have to color in a way, using a color when we have to color in a different way. And you see a little accident happen. I will just make my leaf look a little thinner, just going back on top of the black and fix that line. Okay, we're gonna leave it this way so far. Then if you want, you can switch again to the black thick markers and we are going to fill the gaps and the background. We're gonna have a black background for this one. Then maybe if after we finish this practice, if you like it, you can kind of create another one in your journal and maybe instead use a very bright and light background or not coloring the background at all. You can compare the two, right? What I, I try my best to offer you practice and inspiration that you can use for multiple exercises, right? So you can get the best out of one single video. You can keep switching things around. I read some comments of my previous video. So thank you so much for uh, sharing your and giving me your feedback and also letting me know how the practice went for you. And some people started to redo the practice a second time and they told me, you know, they in the comment they wrote about, oh, I did the practice and I like it much, so I did it again. And this time I use this and that instead of this and that. And I love it even more. So very good job. But this is exactly what I wish for you all to do. Like a practice one time with me, following my lead, but then also have fun and practice on your own. Once you feel more confident and comfortable with the technique and with the media, just really push it all the way. If you want to add more details, add more details. If you want to eliminate some details, eliminate those. If you want to use a different color palette or if you want to add uh, maybe a different media such as, I don't know, pencil instead of markers or whatever, go for it. Always try. It's beautiful to experiment with techniques and medias and concept. Uh, and this is exactly what art practice are, you know, meant to bring you. The opportunity to support your fine model skills, critical thinking skills, coordination skills, learn something new, feel good while you do it, have fun. In my case, you will also learn my Italian accent, so how I can understand a person that speaks with an accent, which is, uh, you know, let me tell you an exercise. I remember when I first came in the United States, we lived uh, in uh, uh, North Carolina for five years, and the Southern accent uh, is uh, uh, a very specific accent. And at the beginning, you know, it was really hard for me and my husband to understand. So we were always uh, like, you know, apologizing to people in advance. It says, if I ask you to repeat things two or three times, it's not because, you know, I'm making fun of you or I'm disrespectful. I'm just because we are learning, right? And it's a learning process. But I feel that exposure is so, such a good thing to have in our life. Exposure to other people's idea and mindset and culture and languages and accent and exposure to art, of course. So, you see, now I don't know how we switch, I switch from uh, the entangled practice to languages and accent, but that is me, right? Now, some of you, it's a uh, returning people, like a supporter of my channel, you know me by now. And you know that I, I can really go from one topic to another. Very patiently, we keep feeling our spaces. And this one is a, a little tedious practice, right? It's kind of irritating that we have to fill these spaces. This is why we are doing it at the very beginning, that we're still fresh, right? So we don't get frustrated at the end. When we think that we're all done, instead we still have to fill the space, like the background. We are going to do it right now. 
we can handle these frustrations better than at the end, once our hands will be tired of so much coloring and tracing lines. I'm already feeling a little irritated <laughs> because I have to feel this space, but it's okay, it's gonna be beautiful. Feeling. Make sure that you don't leave any gaps. You can use uh, shorter strokes. If you need to take a little rest for your hands, do so. Change the technique so you can kind of, you know, give your hands a little relief, longer and slower strokes, down and up. Almost there, guys. And if you feel like that you're about to freak out, believe me, it's exactly how I feel right now. Such a good exercise of perseverance. Perseverance and commitment. You tell yourself that you're going to see this through and you're going to finish what you started. A quick check and I think that we finish all the background. Now, I'm not sure if I will do this pattern inside with the black. So since I'm not sure, I will leave that decision at the very end. And now we're going to have fun playing with some colors. As I told you at the beginning, I'm using a blue, I'm using a dark green, and I'm using a turquoise green. Any green, bluish that you have available, this is a plant. So that is the color palette that we are working through. And I'm going to use one color at a time and color some of the leaves 
before switching to another color. It's faster, so you don't have to switch all the time. Like you color one and you switch, you color one and you switch. That it's like a, it's definitely, it takes longer and it stress you more. So use the technique that you like the most. You can do some sort, like very short strokes with the markers so that will give you also a kind of nice pattern. when the strokes overlap each other. You can start from any leaves, you know, you don't have to copy exactly what I do. Now that you're into the design, we set the outlines, we fill the space, we did the background. Now let's start to loose it up. And I want you to kind of uh, take ownership of your own design and make your own decisions regardless to what I will do on my paper. And because now you know where this is going and you're going to stylish at your own way according to your personality. I always advise you to outline the inside the pattern so it's going to help you to stay out of it. And to be a bit more precise when you color. Every time that you feel that your hands are getting tired, pause the video and take a little break. It has to be a pleasure and it doesn't have to be a race. Gonna move the paper around so I don't go over the design. I know that some of you made me notice that uh, in uh, the comment, and thank you so much for sharing the feedback. I'm trying my best because I have the camera and the light on top of on the right side, but as you know, I'm left-handed, as you notice, and it is tricky because it's not only uh, the position of the camera, but the position of uh, my hands and left-handed people. The, you know, we we have a very weird way to hold the pen and pencil. It's something that we have to develop because otherwise, you know, for us, it would be very, very uncomfortable. And so sometimes I tend to go over and cover the design. So I'm trying to position my hands and myself uh, differently. So to give you not only the best guidance possible with my instruction, my verbal instruction, but also to let you really see very well as well as possible what I'm doing with my hands on the paper so you have really a comprehensive experience and you can really understand instructions visually and verbally. So I apologize if sometimes I'm so focused on what I'm doing and I'm enjoying it so much that I for really completely, I'm not joking, I completely forgot that I have a camera and I don't check it at all. Um, so I, I'm trying to be a little more mindful of that and I am trying my best. Thank you so again for the feedback. We are highly appreciated. This is just a learning uh, process for me as well. I'm not a professional YouTuber and uh, I'm learning alongside with you.
I think I will do this one. Oh, look, I just found out that I left the little gaps uncolored, and here goes the black. Good, easy fix. And actually, if the leaves end here, I forgot this gap too. Look at me. I'm telling you, this practice really help us to focus, right, and stay connected because if you are distracted, even for a second, you might mess it up and you will forget something. It's just such a good exercise for our brain. Always so busy, always overstimulated with multiple, actually, sources like uh, technology gave us a lot and it also took us a lot from us. So I love this practice because they help me and hopefully you to regain that control. And the ability to stay focused for an extended period of time on the same practice and the same project. This is one of the most important things for me to share with my students and teach because they, I see them poor things trapped in this extremely busy schedule, switch subject, switch subject to switch. And now the bell and the other bell and computer and this and that. And you know, art gives them a moment and the opportunity to really work on mental focus. Oh, style, I think I probably will add this one, one last with the green, because then I want to give some space for an opportunity for me to use also the blue and the darker green and see the way that we'll interact with each other and what is going to happen to this nice natural design. Now it's time to switch. I'm going to switch for the blue. I'm going to use the same technique. I outline first. And then I feel the space. Oh my, I love this blue. If you need a little extra time to make the decision of which leaves to color, take that little extra time. Decision should not be rushed. Hmm, let me see. I think I'm gonna do this one with the blue. Hmm, yes, I'm gonna outline first. Nice and carefully. 
And then I feel the space. Low, control your movement, focus your eyes around the paper. Focus on these nice undulated lines, sort of waves. Now, I'm ready to go to my last color and see what happened. I chose this darker green. And I'm using the technique that I use with the other green with short strokes. So you notice that they give you a little pattern already that I like it because it brings some interest to the leaves. Now I'm just noticing, I'm noticing that I cannot do this with this same green because they will blend. I cannot do it with blue. I cannot do it with this tool. So probably for these leaves, I'm going to leave it out and find another green that I must have in my markers. If you do not have another green, maybe you can use this one, but then overlap it with the lighter one. So you create basically another ton of tree of green. If you happen to have the same problem, if you didn't, you know, if you did it differently, you might not have it or you might have it in another area of your design. But just in case, be careful. You don't want to overlap in leaves or two leaves that are close to each other to feature the same colors because it's not going to give you the same variety and the same nice rhythm that we are going for. So just like in that case, leave that leaf 
and then go back creating another color or using another color if you have it already available. It could be a little lighter or you can overlap this, the green that you're using with yellow to create a, a brighter version, like a tint of the same color, maybe. Okay, let's see if I have another green available. Yeah, I have a sort of a turquoise greenish. I will go for it. Let's see. Similar, but different enough. Wow. Now we're going to take our fine black marker, any brand that you have available. It could be a Sharpie, it could be anything that you have. And we are going to outline the pattern inside and then add the few ondulated lines to create that pattern inside the leaves. So you go... Slow and careful. And sometimes if you don't go over exactly the, the, the lines that you trace with the pencil, you can always go over and make your black line a little thicker. It doesn't really matter. Actually, it's really pretty. I'm going to turn the journal again so we're not going to have any hand covering too much. Your time.
I'm honestly very happy that we did the tedious part of the background at the beginning, so we have it already all done. If you want, you can also add an outline of the branch. Although the background, the frame it already. And the second branch as well. go. If you have an eraser, and I should have it, we are going to erase. If you want to go over and erase, maybe you steal a few pencil lines that are visible and we want to erase them to clean it up. And let me retouch. And now with the same marker, if you want, we're gonna do some of the pattern that I was talking about. It's just like, uh, let me move it like that so you can see better. I kind of follow the shape of the leaves. I'm not counting them. You can make as many as you want. If you want to. If you like the design the way it is, you can leave it the way it is. But I feel that these lines is going to give you one more opportunity to practice the lines and they will give this piece a, a little more movement, right? Also, we give us the opportunity to kind of outline the space between the leaves. So the overlapping will be enhanced. We can go up and down. few on one side, few on the other side. Let me turn it around again. And then probably turn it around again. I need to make it comfortable for me. But I want to really, 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 as I told you, I want to be mindful and make sure that you always have the best of you on my hands, on my paper, on my journal. Be careful that don't go over the wrong leaf if you have some type of overlapping as I do. So I kept adding all of these lines and patterns all the way along the leaves 
Now it's your decision if you want to keep this inside the white and the pattern inside the leaves, or if you want to add the color, let's say a yellow or a bright lime green. I'm going to personally leave it white, and I apologize for the little technical difficulties for which we switch, uh, you know, very suddenly to the end of the practice and while I was still doing the lines, but you got all the steps and our beautiful Zentangle nature is pirate practice is all done i'm gonna switch the camera so we can say goodbye okay guys we arrive at the end of this uh, practice that definitely tested our patience perseverance commitment anytime that you felt that you needed to stop i hope that you did so i will add anything of course everything was written in the description box and in the introduction so i hope you read carefully so you were kind of prepared I apologize again for the little technical like uh, issues in which because I the camera stopped recording, my phone stopped recording, and I was so focused on the practice that I didn't notice. So thankfully, it was at the very end, at the very last step, so I could just resume and summarize the final uh, design. I'm going to now close my journal. I feel definitely very like relaxed and refreshed and extremely, extremely focused. I think that I'm going to go out for a walk, and I let you resume your activity, whatever is going to be. I hope it's going to be a pleasant one, and I hope that I'm going to see you all again next week. Please consider to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell for notifications so you will be notified every time that I publish a new videos. Thank you so very much. Ciao a tutti.